Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends, and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sarsen Zero, and today I'm joined by Azure Wolf, Longfish, Fear No Equal, and Blind Oracle. Together, we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons and Dragons. This is the third encounter, clearing out a diabolical cult. So if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, ability, spells, items in hand, fighter. I have 159 of 159 hit points. I have a great axe plus two in hand. I have my second wind and my action surge available, as well as my indomitable. And I no longer have warning bond. Plus one short bow in hand. 134 out of 134 hit points. I have 113 out of 126 hit points. I'm holding the Staff of Python and Shield plus 1. I have 4 level 1, 1 level 2, 3 level 3, 3 level 4 spell slots remaining, and both charges of my channel divinity. 109 out of 109. I have 5 charges left on the Wand of Magic Missiles. I have all 4 first, all 3 second, all 3 third, 2 remaining 4th. Two remaining fifth and one six level slot. I have my arcane recovery still and my pearl of power. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. This encounter has two chain devils and accompanying them are three imps. Chain devils are diabolical fiends, so they resist cold damage, non-magical, non-silvered weapon damage. They are immune to fire and poison. They're immune to the poison condition. They have dark vision and passive perception of 11, so rogues are happy here. Magic resistance like devils do. Multi-attack with chains with a 10-foot reach. They can also grapple. Their grappling restrains. It also does damage. They have a reaction that they can use. They have an unnerving mask. When a creature the devil sees starts its turn within 30 feet, if the creature can see the devil, it makes a DC 14 wisdom save versus frightened until the end of its turn. How do you guys feel about being frightened? We're immune to We're it. We're immune, immune to, to it. it. Why is that? Here is feast. Great. So that's an ability that I'm not going to get to use. And then there's a couple of imps. Imps are shape changers. They can sting and bite for some poison damage. How do you feel about poison damage? Immune to poison damage. Uh, it's just another Sunday. <laughs> yeah, they can turn invisible, which is fun. I think that might show up. But they are full diabolical fiends, so they have magic resistance, cold resistance, immunity to fire, and poison to the poison condition. Non-magical, non-silvered weapons. Terrain, pretty basic terrain. You're going to slosh through some blood red water on the sides, but it's not actually difficult terrain. The statues completely block the area, unlike the previous ones you encountered. And then there's some statues here that you can hide behind. You can't move diagonally through, but you can move around. Any questions about the terrain here? A question on what I'm seeing on the map. There appear to be like low rise walls. Are those doors or something? Or this just, is that just an artifact of the map? Yeah, it's just a low rise wall, like a handrail or something like that. But not difficult terrain. No, no difficult terrain on this map. After that, we're going to go to tactics. Close in tactics, what are you guys going to do here? I completely forgot to ritual cast the familiar. They don't have range. They don't really. They come to us. Yeah, you're a little tapped out on high-end spell slots. Low-end spirit guardians might be nice. We can definitely try and keep the big guys from the squishies, because grappling is going to mess them up pretty bad. Yeah, I can try some crowd control. I was hoping that you might go ahead and, like, pop off chain lightning or something and just clear those imps real fast. Or burn a six-level slot, or try a hypnotic pattern, which would incapacitate them. Doesn't that affect us? If you're not in the area. The imps also only have 10 HP a pop. Yeah. yeah, so we clear those off with an AoE and then focus on the, the big guys. We might try, if we can, disabling one of them, some control or disablement on one of them, and then just focus down the other, while the first one is being relatively useless. If I go to another pattern route, it's a 30-foot cube, or I could go polymorph and just single target one. I'd say polymorph. It's save or suck, but, you know, that would put somebody completely out of the fight for a while. Yeah, basically hypnotic pattern does the same until we hit them or break them. Would we be able to melee engage with them if you hypnotic pattern them? Or would we be stuck outside the pattern? So the pattern goes away once it's cast. So what happens is they're incapacitated until you hit them. Or you lose concentration. Let's go ahead and roll initiative then. Uh, that looks more familiar. Anybody have higher than a 20? Anybody have between a 15 and a 20? 17 for the devils. 15 for the wizard. Who's got between a 15 and a 10? 12 minus 1 on the clerk. Who's got between a 10 and a 5? 7 for the fighter. 7 for the rogue. Top of the order is the devils. Immediately, the imps are going to turn invisible with their action because they don't want to get murked. They have a fly speed of 40, so they're going to go invisible and fly somewhere. And then this guy's going to go invisible and fly over here. And then this guy's going to go invisible and fly over here. 
chain devils have a movement of 30 feet and with a 10 foot reach he's going to hit you with the chains 19 to hit no will miss 18 to hit no will miss other side same thing 11 to hit you fighter miss 23 to hit you that'll hit take nine points of slashing damage you are grappled your speed is zero you are restrained and at the start of your turn, you're going to take 2d6 piercing damage. After that, we go to the wizard. Not knowing where the stuff is, I still think it's beneficial to cast the 30-foot cube on that one to the west. Because he's got the guy grappled, so let's do a hypnotic pattern on him. So you blast this area here. I'm going to make a save with the chain double, DC. Wisdom, DC 17. He's got a plus 4, and he has magic resistance, so he needs 13 on one of these. He's going to fail with a 12 on one of them. He's incapacitated. His little impy friend... He's going to get a 7, so he's going to get incapacitated as well. He is effectively concentrating on a spell of invisibility, so he's going to become visible. That's an action. What else you got? I think I'm good right where I am. After the Azure Wolf is the Longfish. Action. Casting a third level. Spirit Guardian. Enter. After that, we're going to go to Fear No Equal. Move to the southeast of the... If only you weren't grappled. If only I was grappled. I'm going to regret saying that. Because <laughs> incapacitated creatures do not continue grappling. Sorry, you were going to go where? I'm going to move to the southeast of the other Chain Devil. We're going to attack this guy. Attack number one. That's an 18 to hit for 10 damage. Second attack. 26 to hit for 13 damage. Third attack. That is a 24 to hit for 16 damage. And that will be it for me. After that, we're going to go to Blind Oracle. Bonus action, hide. Regular action, shoot. Using the cleric as my hiding post. 27 to hit. Hits. For 33 points of damage. That's my turn. After the Blind Oracle is the top of the order. We're going to start with imps. The imps are going to start their turn off in a zone. Tell me about it. Wisdom 17 safe for 30 damage. Fails with a five, so that's going to drop him. The other guy is going to move to here. He's going to help the chain devil with the fighter, so the chain devil will have advantage on the first attack. That removes his invisibility, right? I don't know that it does. It's not an attack and it's not a spell. But you faint, distract, or in some other way team up to make your allies attack more effective. I don't see anything about this being an attack and it's certainly not a spell. In the meantime, he's going to go fly away from there around this corner. The chain devil is going to start his turn off in the zone. Oof, 17 damage. He passes, so he's going to take half of 17 is 8. First attack with advantage against the fighter. He's going to get a 27 to hit you, fighter. That'll hit. No max damage. 16 slashing. You are grappled. You are restrained. At the start of your turn, you'll take 2d6 unless some shenanigans happens. I'm sure it will. And then he's going to attack the wizard to try to break concentration. He's going to get a 21 to hit your wizard. Oh, that's a shield. After that, we're going to go to the other chain devil. Starts to turn off in the zone. He's going to fail. And take 16 damage. He is no longer incapacitated because he took damage. He's going to go after the cleric, I guess, to crack the spell. I think the wizard is still the highest threat here, so we're going to go after the wizard. 20 to hit you. That's a miss because your AC is now 22. 18 to hit you. Also a miss for the exact same reason. After that, we're going to go to the other imp. Oh, he's in cap, so that's not going to happen there. After all of my guys, we go to the Asia Wolf. Let's try to burn this one on the right down. So let's cast third level magic missile. The charges, I'll just look and see. That'll put me at five. That is a three on the die. Three plus one is four. Four plus five is nine. Nine times five is 45. So this guy's going to take 45 points of damage and drop. Thanks. Yep. Some shenanigannery did happen. I'm going to go northeast just past the call of the, of the fighter. Provoking an attack of opportunity as you leave his threatened square. Does a 20 hit you? Nope. Why is that? Oh, wait, it does, because, uh... Shield drops at the beginning of your turn. Yeah, so we'll put it back up. Okay, so you're going to use another reaction, bring up another shield. After the Azure Wolf is the Longfish. Put me directly east of the Chain Devil, and I will hit him with a Sacred Flame. Dex 17 save. He's got advantage on this, but his dex is not good enough, he's going to fail. For 14 damage, that'll be it. After the longfish is the fear no equal. Can I go to the far side of the devil? We'll just go there and lock him down. First attack. That is a 15 to hit. It's a miss, sorry. Second attack is a 28 to hit for 19 damage. Third attack is a 17 to hit. Yep. For a 14 damage. And we will save the action surge for another time. After the fear no equal is the blind oracle. Curse these short stubby legs. If only you have boots of speed. Yeah, they take a bonus action to activate, which is kind of at a premium. 
but we will use them. Bonus action to activate the Boots of Speed, so I double my movement speed for the turn, for what it's worth. Any creature that makes an attack of opportunity against me has disadvantage on the attack roll for the next minute. He's already oppied. It applies for the whole minute, though, so it's useful if it comes up later. And then let's go north? Question mark? <laughs> yeah, let's go straight north. Stay within the zone, or...? Yeah, in the zone. And then take the shot at the chain double. 16 to hit? 16 is what you need. Ooh, 31 points of damage. Lethal. There we go. You got some more movement? You can hang out there? Let's go hang out next to the wizard, then, on the other side of the column. That was the blind oracle. All right, two imps, no waiting. Let's start with this guy, because it's going to be quick. Tell me about it. 17 save. Fails. 14 damage. Dead. The other one is going to jump out of hiding and attack the rogue. He's got advantage on this attack. He's going to get a 21 to hit you. That will hit. Take seven points of piercing damage. Okay. And eight points of poison damage. <laughs> <laughs> that I ignore, thanks to Hero's Feast. And then I'm going to use Uncanny Dodge to half the attack's damage. Uh, are you, though? Uncanny. Uh, from an attacker, you can see, which you cannot do because he's invisible when he attacks you. All right. I'll take the seven. <laughs> You're taking a whole extra four damage. I'm sure you'll live. You know, I would like to use my buttons, man. That's true. You have the buttons you want to use them. After that, we're going to go to the Azure Wolf. I can see this guy lets Ray of Frost. A 15? 15 hits. 4, 12. Plus the 5, so 17. Cut in half. After that, we're going to go to the Longfish. Move me diagonally up next to the Fiend. And then uh, Sacred Flame him. Deck 17. He's going to pass the 19. I do nothing. Fear. I'll just walk over next to Cleric. We're just going to chop at it with an axe. Does a 17 hit him? Yep. For 16 damage. Dead. Bye bye. Report hit points 109, 109. 113 out of 126. 134 of 159. 127 of 134. Any end of encounter actions? Activate the Pearl of Power. What are you getting back? Third level. Yeah, throwing down my second wind for 16 recovered health. Recover arrows. It's that time. They've descended down to the second layer of the cultist temple and hear all manner of evil nonsense up ahead of them. So they're going to clear out the area beyond and see what's going on. Three encounters down, three more to go before the long rest. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope you'll join us next week as the adventure continues. I'm Sarson Zero, and I will see you next time.